if you want to be redeemed, you know what I'm saying? The Lord called us to act a certain way, not only with him, but with each other as a people. You know what I'm saying? We got to get up off all these so-called, these drugs. We got to get up off these gangs. Stop killing each other. All that. Because that's going to make you an enemy of God. Yes, the Negro that thinks he a blood or a crip and killing his brother is a coward in the eyes of God. That's right. There ain't no other way we can tell you what we're supposed to do. Oh, man, we look up to you. We don't. Mm. Don't look up to you. You murdering your people. Mm. You taking out people in your own army. Devil, what is you doing? And we've been known, okay, the Lord say thou shall not kill. Who was he talking to? Who was his audience? Israel. It was Israel, man. That's the whole right. world wasn't at the mountain. Who do you think Christ was talking to? Who was in Jerusalem? Israel. He, remember, you got to trip off the historical setting when you read the Bible, man, because you've been so destroyed by Christianity, you think he talking to the whole world. He talking to you as a people. And even in that time, you had our people that knew, and then you had our people that was claiming Gentile. Even then, saying it was Greeks and Romans and, and the Scythians and barbarians and all this madness, other than who you really are. So you, you have to come on back. That's the whole thing. Because if not, the Lord said, I'm going to spin arrows on you. Somebody grab Psalms for me. Psalm chapter 7. Psalm chapter 7. Whenever you, was you done with that verse? Last two verses to go ahead. Right on what you just said. Verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. And to what? Remember his holy covenant or his holy marriage that he got between him and his people. All right, come on now. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. He swore it. You see, it ain't it ain't because anything that we didn't did. The Lord made a promise to our righteous forefather Abraham, who was called a partner of God, a friend of God. So he he promised. That's why he got to go go into covenant, and that's why he got to redeem his people, because we are the lost seed of Israel or the lost house of Abraham. That's who we are. That's right. Go ahead, bro. Verse seventy-four. Head quack. That he would grant unto us that we be delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. See, that we might serve him without fear, delivered out of the snares and traps of our enemy. So your redeemer coming, man. This heathen ain't got too much longer to tread on your back. But do you want the redemption is the question. Oh. How many of us, when the Lord tell us get up out of here, and he get us up out of here like we did in Egypt, we're going to be like, oh, no. I want to go back to America where I had my EBT card. I want to go back to America where I could have went to Schnucks. No. See, if he coming with a kingdom, that means you got to get rid of this one. See that? And that's what the heathen know. That's why if you believe in the return of Christ, according to FEMA, you're a terrorist. Terrorist. You're already on the list. Because they know what you ain't figured out yet. That means our kingdom is over with. And that means we can't serve ourselves with these Negroes no more. <laughs> huh? Who got Psalm? Psalm chapter 7. Psalm chapter 7, 9 on down, man. Be, be, because there's a judgment coming if you don't turn back. See, it, it's free will, but it's kind of like it's not. Huh? It's like a, it's like a predestinated choice. See? Because the Lord already know who's going to serve him. That's right. You trip if you want. Yeah, you got, a, you got a choice. But the matter of fact, the matter is, he already know who's going to be to the right. And I already know who's going to eat, going to tell, go to the left. That's right. So it's like, okay, yeah, we got a choice. But it's like, you don't got a choice. Because he already know what it's going to be. But the opportunity is there for you. After so long of being stiff-necked and rebellious, the Lord will give you over to a reprobate mind. He'll give you over. All that you lust for. Oh, okay, go ahead and hide it and die. See, you got to understand who you're dealing with. You're dealing with the most high power of all. So you don't have to fear and tremble when you come into him, man. Not play. Not play. I will be at Psalms chapter 7. Psalms chapter 7, verse 9. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. See, David was praying to the Lord, hey, in the wicked, but establish the just. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. Establish the righteous. Come on, Israel. For the righteous God triumph the hearts 
of and rain. The Lord's gonna try your mind and the reins of your mind. You feel me? You're gonna try that. In other words, you're gonna be put your, your faith is gonna be tested. Just what it is, man. Come on, brother. Ten. Five. Ten. My defense is of God. No, Barack Obama. Of God. The government. Of God. My defense is of the most high. That's right. Come on, bro. Which saved the upright in heart. Eleven. God judged the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. Now, someday. Every day. Once a week. Every day. You say the Lord is angry with the wicked every day. Every day. Come on, bro. Twelve. If he turn not. If he don't repent. If he turn not. Come on, bro. He will wet his sword. The Lord is going to sharpen his sword if you refuse to turn back to him. Come on, huh? He had bent his bow and made it ready. He have already bent his bow. Bow shoot arrows. Already made it ready. All right, come on, huh? He had also prepared for him the instruments of death. Lord, them prepared for whoever refuses to turn to him. Lord said he already got instruments to death prepared. All right, come on, bro. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Oh, arrows have been ordained. Huh? Ordained for those that have been persecuting the, the, the children of the Mosaic. Arrows already been ordained for, in other words, destruction. See that? This God of this Bible ain't nobody to be playing around with, man. Check his rap sheet. Last time he destroyed the earth, he spared eight people and a few animals. Everybody else got flatlined. And that's in there so you can trip off of it and then operate in fear of the most high. Don't be treating him like he's a tooth fairy. That's right. And you know, I'll get to him later. Put him on the back burner. Who was that calling? Oh, I tell him I call him back. That's the wrong vibration to be in dealing with the most high. That's the wrong vibration to be in. You better hurry up and get to him. Because if not, he's already prepared to answer Mr. Death for you. How do we tell you that smoothly? How do we tell you that to where your spirit don't get rattled? Your spirit supposed to get rattled when That's you right. read something like that, man. The earth so, trembling, why, so why ain't you? Who <laughs> said the earth trembling, why you ain't trembling? <laughs> All right, come on, let's get it. Psalm 7, verse 14. Behold, he travailed with iniquity and have conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. Yeah. 15. He made a pit and digged it, and is fallen into the ditch which he made. 16. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. 17. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. See that? He said, whatever you put out, you gonna get back. Somebody grab Galatians 6, Galatians 6, 7 through 9. The Lord ain't never mocked, man. What you sow, in other words, what you plant, you gotta reap. And our people really understood that in the ancient world because we was farmers. We knew that whatever seed we drop in that ground at harvest time, we gotta harvest it, we gotta reap it. So whatever you sow out here, if you sow in murder, deceit, lies, uh, guess what you gonna get back? You gotta reap that. Uh, in other words, your violent dealing is going to come down upon your own pate. That's right. You dig a ditch, you're going to fall in it. That's right. You ain't getting away with nothing, man. You feel me? We we are operating in the spirit of partying, and we on the brink of World War III. It ain't no time to be partying. It ain't no time. It tell you it's a time for peace and a time for war. We at war. It's war time. That's right. It ain't no time to be playing around, man. But... But why everybody, why, why the revolution is kicking off all over the known world, the Negro here in America is partying. Try to be two chains. <laughs> Come on, man. All this stuff is a distraction. It's all set up to distract you and, and take your eyes off the ball of what's really going on here. It's all it is. Who got that script? Galatians 6, 7 through 9. I Got it? Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Be not deceived. 
God is not mocked. See that? The Bible keeps telling you don't be deceived. So it ain't no good thing. Oh, I mean, what does it matter if I was deceived? The Bible tells you don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Come on now. For whatsoever a man soweth, then shall he also reap. Whatever you sow, you gonna reap. The heathen tell you, the heathen call it karma today. What goes around, comes around. Huh? But that's that's biblical, man. The Lord ain't mocked. Whatever you sow, you gotta reap. Whatever you put out, you gonna get back. Right. So if you want blessings, put blessings out there. Want somebody to treat you right, get out here and, 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 and treat them right. Do what you supposed to be doing. Because if you if you sowing jacking, raping, and murder, would you surprise somebody didn't jack you for? Or would you surprise somebody to rape your daughter for? And you've been out here on that. What you think? The Lord ain't mocked, man. You're going to get back everything you put out. So if you know that, put out righteousness then. All right, come on, Israel. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. <laughs> you sow to your flesh a carnal mind, you're going to reap corruption. Because the fruits of the flesh or the works of the flesh, you can't get into the kingdom like that. We'll read that next. Come on, now. But he that sowed to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. See, if you sow to the Spirit, if you out here planting spiritual things, trying to get closer to the Most High, you're going to reap life everlasting. So don't we all want eternal life? We don't went through too much not to get it as a people. Right? So if you want eternal life, guess what you need to be sowing? Spiritual things. Huh? And I tell you, the law of God is spiritual, so you ain't spiritual without the law of God. In his eyesight, you may be spiritual on the left-hand side, dealing with Satan, but dealing with the most high, you want to be deemed righteous, spiritual. That's what you need to be doing, applying the commandments. Finish it off, huh? Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Right. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. See that? Don't be weary in well-doing. Don't be, ah, dang. I got to get out here and put in some work for the Mosai. Don't be weary and well doing in due season. You're going to reap if you faint not, meaning if you take it to the end. If you faint not, don't get tired. Don't be, don't get in the spirit. Dang, man. You know, and the Sabbath become a burden to you. Or putting in work of the Lord become a burden to you. It's never supposed to be a burden. Never. You're supposed to be looking forward to it. Right. And you're going to reap in due season if you faint not. Somebody grab Proverbs 22 and 8. Another witness to that. Proverbs 22 and 8. Whatever you sow, you got to reap. That's the message. Reaping and sowing. You got to reap what you sow. Whatever you plant that ground at harvest time, you got to harvest it. So whatever you put out in life, you're going to get back. See, that's the equation that we need to know. Because the Nick will say, why? And I don't even trip, bro. You just jacked the whole city. <laughs> you didn't jack the whole city and you wonder why you didn't got robbed and killed. Or your people done got robbed and killed. What was you putting out there? Death. And so guess what you get back? Death. Come on, it's that simple. It's that simple. We don't we don't want to hear it because we like we love our flesh more than we love the destruction of the Lord. You got the Proverbs 22 and 8, huh? Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs! Proverbs! Chapter 22! Proverbs went out. There it goes. Oh, it came close. Proverbs! Chapter 22! Verse 8! He that soweth iniquity shall reap iniquity! Vanity. <laughs> Read it again, huh? He that sows iniquity shall reap vanity. If you sow in iniquity, if you plant in law breaking crimes against the Lord, you're going to reap vanity. In other words, you're spinning your wheels, you're wasting your time out here breaking the commandments of the Most High and not even caring about it. That's the crazy part. Today, you don't even care. You, you, you have no shame in going against the Most High. You ought to be ashamed. We, we be ashamed whenever we slip. You be ashamed when you go against the Mosai because guess what? If you don't get it right, you're going to reap vanity. 
All right, come on now. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. The rod of your anger going to fail. You feel me? So what's some of the iniquity that we out here sowing? Uh. Like, there's a lot of people like, okay, so what does that mean? You know, break it down. Huh? Break it down. Huh? Well, let's go to it. Let's go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians 5. Go ahead and pull it. Galatians 5, start around verse 19. I got Job chapter 4, verse 8. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. <laughs> Read that again, boy. Read, even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. Plow iniquity. You plant or sow wickedness, guess what you reap? Huh? Iniquity and wickedness. That's right. That's what you get back. Huh? They tell it today, we'll go around, come around. That's right. First nine, by the blast of the Most High, they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils, they are they consumed. See that? You're going to perish by the breath of the Lord's nostrils, by putting out what you ain't supposed to be putting out, by walking in the works of the flesh and not the fruits of the spirit. And that's something Israel our forefathers never got. We was Israel out with the garments and long beards and fringes and we had all that, man. But we we had a wicked mind. We still bowed our knees to other gods. And you know if you spit in your God face, guess what you gonna do to your neighbor? I appreciate about yeah. Psalms chapter seven, verse eight. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity is in me. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous of oh, the righteous God drive the heart and the rain. Well, we just read that too. <laughs> we just read that. <laughs> oh, yeah, you must have stepped away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All praises, though. All praises. Got to run it on back. Yeah, Galatians 5, start at verse 18, bro. We don't die. Galatians chapter 5, verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Under the law of sin. Hold that. Grab Romans 7 and 23 just to prove that. If you led by the Spirit, you're not under the law of sin. Huh? I mean, says, see, we gotta keep the law right there. Wait till we get to the next verses following that. You have a hard time explaining that. That's why, if you don't know the scriptures, you are not gonna understand Paul's letters. Cause you gonna say, is he telling us to break the law? I'm, and the Negro will be thinking he led by the Spirit breaking the law of God. 